ay mababuhayanin sa harap ng pagsuko huwag kang susuko bigyan ng boses ang sigaw ng masa ang bagong pag-asa ay mula siyo mula siyo mula siyo panibagong pag-asa ay mula siyo Good day everybody my name is Dr. Butch Ong. I am a professor and lecturer of the College of Science, teaching Science, Technology, and Society 1 or SDS 1. Uh, but today we will be talking about uh, basic first aid for your um, first aid module in MSTP. So uh, we, when we talk about first aid, it is actually uh, just, a, it's just one part of a whole line of activities which will lead to the improvement or to the uh, uh, increased survival of a patient or someone in need. Sa Tagalog, ang tawag ito ay paunang lunas. Actually, mas maganda nga ang, uh, ang uh, Tagalog version, ng paunang lunas, ang unang-unang gagawin natin para ma makamta natin ang lunas para sa si isang pasyente na nangangailangan dahil sa kanyang uh, critical na condition no? or life-threatening condition or sa isang kalamidad. No? So, uh, when we talk about uh, paunang lunas or first aid, we talk about uh, steps in what we will do to Im improve the survival. So, we map out five critical steps in, in determining uh, what to do you know, uh, in times of, of crisis or uh, life-threatening condition. The first step uh, is recognizing the emergency. No, or recognizing uh, the life-threatening injury and activation of the EMS or the emergency medical system. Uh, when we uh, perform first aid, we never do it alone. Uh, we, uh, we always must ask for help. No? We, in the Philippines, we can now dial 911 to call for uh, assistance from somebody who knows how to uh, help you uh, bridge the gap between uh, your area to the hospital. No? Uh, the EMS uh, dispatcher, when you dial uh, 911, a dispatcher will, uh, on the other end, will uh, talk to you. Uh, the, EMS, the EMS dispatcher is knowledgeable in uh, providing you step-by-step step-by-step uh, 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 step -step, uh, procedures in controlling whatever it is that the patient has. No? So if the patient is bleeding or if the patient is no longer breathing or the patient has no pulse or the patient is choking, the uh, dispatcher knows how to give you instructions. Secondly, the dispatcher also has a gamut of uh, resources uh, in, at his fingertips. Uh, he, he can call for an ambulance, he can call for a fire truck, he can call for police, uh, which may aid you in, in uh, increasing the survival of the patient. The next part of uh, the chain is activating uh, first aid itself or prefer performing early first aid or early CPR. You know? um, after you call for help, you may now do uh, what you are trained to do in first aid, to control the bleeding, to perform CPR, you know? uh, and to give the patient uh, uh, relief. After you have performed your CPR, should the patient uh, have no, have no uh, pulse or no, and no breathing, uh, after you perform two minutes of CPR, uh, the next chain is to perform rapid defibrillation. Ito po yung kinukuryente natin, yung sinasyak natin yung pasyente no? uh, to aid the heart in uh, uh, pumping back again. No? Uh, in, in the country, there, uh, there are a few buildings and a few clinics, a few hospitals who have defibrillators. No? Um, it was encouraged uh, some time ago that uh, all facilities, uh, resorts, offices, no, uh, and modern, uh, every building would have a uh, defibrillator. No? Of course, uh, we don't wish to, uh, to able to use the defibrillator often <laughs> as uh, heart attacks don't really occur every day at a high at a high rate, you know? but we can uh, perform uh, CPR uh, best uh, if we have a defibrillator at hand. Once a patient uh, has been defibrillated, continue CPR and wait for the ambulance to arrive. You know? So that is the fourth chain, the fourth link in the chain, uh, the ambulance. The ambulance will now transport uh, the victim to the hospital for advanced medical care. This is the final part, the final chain. 
the final link to the chain is advanced medical care. No? So all, all of these links, uh, the, the, every link in this five chain, uh, uh, five link chain of survival is important and it, and, it, and it increases the chances of survival of, of a patient. Remove one, chain and then the chances of survival becomes less for example you don't know cpr so you don't perform it but you call for help and the ems arrives and they do the cpr no? um, in those cases uh because you called for help and because help did arrive and the, the, the patient is transported to the hospital the chances of survival is still great no but greater even if you have performed a high quality cpr so what is first aid? As I've mentioned a while ago, first aid is the immediate care given to an injured or a, a person who has had a life-threatening condition. No? It does not take the place of proper medical treatment. Uh, therefore, if the patient uh, survives or if the patient becomes better, no, you don't just send them home. No? You uh, still refer the patient to uh, the hospital or clinic. Now, well, there are legal uh, considerations when giving first aid because everyone has the right to refuse assistance. No? Um, some people just simply don't want to be touched. Uh, some people uh, don't want to be assisted. No? So when you see or spot somebody who, is, uh, who needs help, no? we approach them and we uh, introduce ourselves. No? Like, I am Dr. Ong. Um, I know first aid. How can I help you or can I help you? Or I am Juan de la Cruz. I'm trained in basic first aid. I know CPR. May I help you? So whenever we perform first aid, we first have to have consent of the patient. About 98 to 99% of the, of the time, people would want to be helped and people want to be well and, and to survive. You know? Now, in, in very, very slim uh, percentage you know, uh, of the population all over the world, you know, very, very slim, uh, that people don't want to be helped. You know? So what do you do? Do you just go away? Do you just simply leave the patient? No, you wait. If the patient becomes uh, worse and the patient collapses and loses consciousness or unable to communicate or uh, the patient becomes unresponsive, no? uh, you may now perform your first aid under the pretext of implied consent. No? Implied meaning that it is implied that whenever a person loses consciousness, they would want to be helped. And of course, perform first aid only you know, uh, when you have been trained to do, meaning you do not uh, perform any uh, therapies, any procedures which do, you do not know how to do. You know? So whenever you try to, to perform first aid, you know, uh, give uh, the assistance the best you can, the way you were trained. The first part of uh, helping somebody, so, of course, to survey the scene or environmental survey. You know? When we want to assist, assist somebody in need, we, we need to as, assess our uh, the safety to which uh, you will be assisting in. You know? So uh, an example would be if you were in a highway and you see a, a motorcycle which is, has stumbled and the, the rider is down at, at the uh, side, uh, at the side you know? uh, and you stop. You know? Uh, try to see if you smell uh, gasoline or if you see a pool of gasoline or if the bike is, uh, is spewing uh, smoke or is, is burning. No? If, if uh, the scene is too dangerous for you to enter, do not enter. Simply call for help and the help uh, through perhaps the fire department will arrive or the barangay who has a, a fire extinguisher will arrive, then, then help can be given. No? So first, do a quick uh, survey of the environment, no? looking for these elements. Number one, hazards. Hazards which would be dangerous to you, such that a pool of gasoline and, uh, and fire. No? Uh, hazards that, that could be dangerous to the victim and to the bystanders. Next, uh, look for the mechanism of injury. What happened to, to, the, uh, to the person who needs help? No? Is the mechanism of injury still there? No, is the is the causative agent of the injury still there? If it, it is, it might not be safe for you to enter the scene. Then count the number of victims. No, uh, sometimes you will have to respond to a group of people needing help. Uh, let's say a vehicular accident again. Uh, with this time, uh, a whole uh, uh, van full of people. No? When you have that kind of emergency, then you will have to prioritize which person they will give you assistance first. 
Now, the whole thing should only be done in a few seconds. When you arrive at the scene and you see that the scene is safe for you to enter and you, you are now able to approach the patient, do the initial assessment. Basically, it's uh, checking for, uh, for three things. You're checking for the person's consciousness, uh, if the patient is responsive, if the patient is talking, if the patient is confused or sleepy or lethargic. No? Second, you check for the pulse. No? Uh, then you check for breathing. So these are the three main uh, elements in your initial assessment. Again, huh? you, uh, check for the consciousness, check for bleeding or uh, the pulse, voilà, and then check for breathing. Okay? Uh, determine if the patient is conscious. No? So tap the shoulder. No? Uh, if you know the name, uh, call out the name or uh, 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 call out, the, hey, 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 are you okay? No? So check the person's consciousness. If the patient is able to respond to you uh, coherently, is able to understand you and respond to you, then the patient is responsive. You know? And uh, you can now ask the patient what happened to him, where, uh, where the source of pain is, or if he can move his legs or not. No? Then check for uh, CAB, no? C for circulation. So check for signs of uh, circulation, such as pulse. No? Check the airway, if it is open, if the airway is obstructed, if you can breathe properly or not. No? And check for breathing. No? See if the chest is rising and falling in a rhythmic, normal, and regular pattern. If the patient is responsive and is able to talk to you and they are, they are able to understand you and talk to you coherently, you know, ask them what injuries they have and uh, what difficulties they are experiencing. Uh, check and provide first aid for these complaints as well as others that may be involved. If the patient is uh, unconscious or, inco or incoherent or the patient is unresponsive to your, to your uh, query, you know, Observe for obvious signs of injuries uh, from head to toe. No? Look for signs of bleeding. Uh, look for uh, some deformities in the limbs. Uh, should there be a fracture? No? And provide first aid as necessary. For bleeding control, uh, if you see uh, external bleeding, apply direct pressure. Uh, direct pressure stops most bleeding. Uh, please uh, wear gloves or protection. Uh, if you don't have gloves, you can use a plastic bag uh, uh, over your hand you know, to protect your hand from the uh, blood. There are many, many uh, uh, blood pathogens, you know, hepatitis, HIV, which can uh, enter your bloodstream and make and uh, infect you. you know? So there are uh, dangers to helping other people. You know? So we, can, we wear gloves or wear any personal protective equipment to prevent... Um, the uh, contamination, contaminants from entering your body. Uh, so you've worn, for example, a plastic bag uh, over your hand, uh, place a, a gauze or a clean towel or clean cloth over the wound and apply direct pressure. Once you apply direct pressure, elevate the injured limb. You know, for example, in this case, uh, there is a uh, injury is, uh, uh, in the patient's palm or, or, or wrist. You know, and, uh, the, and you apply direct pressure using a gauze or clean cloth and you elevate the limb combine the uh, direct pressure with elevation if bleeding continues uh, despite the elevation and direct pressure um, apply pressure in the pressure points or in the arterial pressure points of the body to further stop the bleeding i have some examples here so uh, for example if you are bleeding in the uh, uh, forearm right uh, you can press the uh, artery here you no know? if you are bleeding from shoulder down you can press the artery there you no know? if you're bleeding in the lower extremity or leg there is the femoral artery which you can press right so these are some of the pressure points you can use if direct pressure and elevation do not work so uh, uh, this is another example no? so um, if you're uh, bleeding from uh, the uh, shoulder down or if you're bleeding here in the, in the uh, this side, uh, lateral aspect of the chest and abdomen no? you can press a subclavian artery right there this is your clavicle or collarbone you can press it uh, uh, quite uh, uh, deeply and it will occlude or stop the blood flow from going through the subclavian artery no? if you have uh, 
uh, nose bleed, for example, or uh, bleeding here in this area, uh, press the uh, lower part of the jaw. No, this is not the neck. This is the jaw. Okay, uh, press it firmly, and uh, you will see that the bleeding will stop. No? Uh, when you have bleeding in your uh, forearm, this is the bicep. No? The biceps, and you can press uh, the biceps to stop the bleeding. And the fem the femoral, there, no, at the uh, at the inner part of the thigh. No, inner part of the thigh. So. Um, control methods for internal bleeding. No? Internal bleeding is something that, you, of course, you cannot see. No? Uh, it, is, uh, it has occurred inside, whether a muscle has torn or a uh, blood vessel inside has ruptured. No? So you can see bruises or contusions of the skin. No? These are painful, tender, uh, rigid, or, uh, or uh, uh, the abdomen, you can see it bruised if there are uh, internal bleeding of the internal organs. No? Stools that are black uh, or contain uh, bright red blood, meaning you have blood inside your colon no? or your gastrointestinal system. If, it is, uh, if the stools are black, then you have bleeding ulcers in your stomach. If the stools have bright red blood, mean, it means that you, are, you have uh, bleeding in your colon. So what to do? Of course, you have to monitor, again, the CAB. So I, I made a mistake here. It's CAB, circulation, airway, and breathing. No? Keep the victim lying down on, on his or her left side. This will prevent uh, the expulsion of vomit uh, uh, from the stomach, and, and it will allow the, the, the uh, drainage of the vomit outside. No? So it will uh, help in removing whatever, uh, for example, if the patient has uh, eaten a lot of food, no? um, para hindi siya masamid, no? uh, lay, the, lay the person on his side so that the vomit can easily drain away. No? Treat uh, shock by raising the victim's legs. No? Uh, Shock occurs when there is a compromise of the circulatory system, when you've lost a lot of blood, and uh, the circul circulatory system uh, can no longer cope with the loss of blood. No? Your heart is pumping very fast no? to try to oxygenate your body, you know? but uh, blood is, is, uh, has already escaped no? through, your, through bleeding. No? Um, the patient can go into shock. Shock simply means that your internal organs are now compromised because of less of uh, lack of oxygen. No? So you raise the victim's legs, such as this, or raise the victim's uh, uh, arms, such as uh, here. No? If you have a, a, a bleeding forearm, no? uh, to help bring the blood back to the heart and into the brain. No? Okay, shock refers to the circulatory system failures I've mentioned before, and it happens because uh, there's insufficient amount of oxygenated blood uh, to the vital organs. No? So this can be the result of the loss of blood due to uncontrollable bleeding or circulatory system uh, problem. If the heart stops pumping or becomes slower and slower and slower, then there is less oxygen going into the uh, vital organs. No? I uh, can have shock due to loss of fluid, such as dehydration or excessive uh, sweating. Blood, of course, is made up of water also. No? So if you have uh, diarrhea, no? if, you if you are uh, dehydrated from extreme heat stresses and you have excessive sweating, you lose fluids, you lose water. No? And because blood is made also of uh, water, it becomes thicker. No, it's, it's harder for the heart to pump the blood if it's thicker. No? Therefore, you have less oxygen going into your vi or, uh, vital organs. No? Shock also occurs when you have trauma, when uh, uh, your blood vessels are ruptured. No? Shock also occurs when you have extreme emotional events. No? When you are stressed, you're highly stressed, you're, 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 your body tenses up. No? Um, your body will try to uh, uh, bring the blood no, towards the vital organs. No? Uh, that's why when you're stressed, you look flushed, you look pale, no? because blood is removed from or taken away from your peri peripheral circulation and brought to the central circulation. So your hands are cold, no? you're, you look pale, your lips are, are whitish, no? uh, because blood is now uh, brought to the core. 
So what to look for? No? As I've mentioned, uh, there is less oxygenated uh, blood towards the vital organs. So if you have uh, less oxygen to the brain, you have al altered mental status. You have anxiety, you're confused, you're sleepy, you, know, you cannot answer questions. You also look for pallor, uh, cold, cold, clammy skin. Look at the, look at the nail beds, uh, look at the color. If you depress the nail beds, uh, your nail bed from pink should turn to white, and when you uh, release it, it should slowly go back to uh, pink. You know? If you have nausea and vomiting, if you have rapid breathing and rapid pulse, you know? uh, if the shock is severe, you become unresponsive and you collapse. You could become unconscious. So what to do? You know, this is a very, very life-threatening condition. You know? So uh, we, we are already talking about loss of blood, loss of oxygen, failure of vital organs. So, so as a, uh, a lay person or a lay rescuer, it might seem overwhelming, but just do these simple steps. You know? um, do not panic. Just do these simple steps, call, call for help, do these simple steps, and wait for the ambulance to arrive. Lay the person on his back. Elevate the feet. Uh, provide blanket because the patient feels cold because of shock. No? Um, and do not leave the patient. Assure the patient that you're there to help, that when he loses consciousness, that you will be there, you will help uh, the, the EMTs or the uh, EMS and the ambulance crew once they arrive. So being there already is a big assurance, uh, a big, uh, a big uh, cause for uh, relief for the patient, which relieves the emotional shock. Uh, all right. Um, another cause for shock is dehydration, as I've mentioned. No? So how can we dehydrate it apart from uh, excessive sweating, diarrhea? No? We can have uh, shock through burns, no? when your skin is burned, when, when you are in a, uh, an area which is too hot and you have excessive bleeding, no? uh, you lose sweat and you lose uh, fluids. No? So let's talk about burns. No? So you have uh, several kinds of burns, the first degree, second degree, and third degree burns. So what the most su superficial type of burn is the first degree burn. Uh, you often actually uh, encounter this at the beach when you have... Uh, uh, sunburn, no? so first degree burn. A sunburn is first degree burn, no? where where only the outer part of the skin is damaged. No? Uh, as you know, through your uh, 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 high school and grade school, that the skin has the epidermis or the top layer. Here it is, epidermis. The dermis is where your blood vessels are, and the uh, sub dermis or uh, subcutaneous tissue where your uh, nerves and your muscles and your subcutaneous fat is located. So first degree burns occur in the epidermal layer, right? So you have your redness and uh, sometimes you see skin peeling away. So this is skin uh, being peeled away. No? So precisely what you have in uh, uh, sunburn. No? So what do you do? Simply cool the area, no? cool the area. Uh, uh, using uh, tap water, or clean, clean tap water, clean water for about 10 to 45 minutes, depending on the patient's uh, 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 comfort. Huh? Um, cold stops the burn from progression. No? Of course, when you have uh, heat stresses, the heat destroys tissue, and the heat can uh, be progressive and uh, destroy uh, tissues. Uh, progressively. So you have sunburn getting progressively, progressively larger. Uh, you may also use aloe vera, you know, aloe, to uh, uh, address burns. So basically, for me, it's just water. You know? uh, water is the most, uh, is, is the universal, uh, the universal uh, coolant you know, for the body. Uh, I, I would actually avoid lotions and moisturizers and just use plain water. Second degree burn is uh, deeper than the dermis, the epidermis. So now you have the dermis and uh, the epidermis here and the dermis there being burned. No? So this occurs when you have scalding burns. So parang naluluto ka, na, na, na tapisan ka ng hot oil, no? and you have blisters. No? The blisters are actually fluid, uh, your fluid, 
which tries to cool down the tissue. So do not puncture the, the blisters. It's helping your, your uh, body cool down. No? Don't puncture them. Besides, if you puncture them, you might introduce infection. No? You might introduce germs inside the uh, blister. And uh, you, may now, you can have uh, cellulitis or in infection of the skin. No? So you have blisters, you have swelling, you have fluids leaking out precisely because your body is trying to cool that area. No? Of course, you have severe pain. Uh, first degree burn is also is, uh, is painful already. What more in, in a uh, second degree burn wherein uh, uh, more than half the uh, one third to one half of the of the skin depth is already burnt. No? So what do you do? Cold water again. No? As long as it's clean water, you can have wet, uh, uh, cold uh, wet packs. No? Uh, you you may give pain relievers, no, but uh, it is not your duty as a first aider to provide these. No, do not break the blister and uh, call for help. No, so again, water. Water is the the first aid for uh, second degree burns because it because it cools down the body. Even deeper are third degree burns. So you have your dermis here, your epidermis, your dermis, and all the way down to the uh, muscle. And sometimes you can see bone already. You know? Third degree burns or full thickness burn. The whole thickness of your skin is burned. Now, if you allow, allow me to go back, so this is the dermis. So uh, first degree burn is just the Top layer, it's about nine, uh, ten percent of your skin. Second degree burn is uh, a third of the thickness, so half of the thickness of your skin. But full thickness is third degree burns. So third degree burns are not painful at all because they have already burnt the uh, nerve ending. So you do not feel any pain for third degree burns. No? Uh, you see charring no? or uh, ashes or uh, charring of, of, of the tissues. No? Um, the tissues can appear gray-white gray because, because of the lack of uh, blood no? or cherry red because of uh, obvious uh, profuse bleeding or black no? because of the extreme burn of the skin. No? Again, this is not painful. No? So if you see somebody who has a burn, oh, the, well, the hand, the ch most, mostly the chest, no? a third degree burns occur kapag nadaplisan talaga na mainit na, na oils. No? And uh, the, the oils are, are strong, and the hot oil is strong enough to cook through your skin. No? Full thickness burns. No? And you ask them, is it painful? If they, if they say it's not painful at all, suspect third degree burns. So will you go and get your universal coolant water? No. For third degree burns, do not apply anything to it. Call for help. Cover it. But do not uh, cover it just to protect it from dust and, uh, and uh, infection. Uh, light, light covering. No? And do not put anything. Call for help. It may seem that third degree burns are the easiest to treat as a first aider, but that's true. No? As for first aider, it is very uh, difficult to treat second degree burns, even first degree burns, because they're very, very painful. And the patient will, kung baga papalag ang pasyente ninyo na masakit buhusa ng tubig. Pero third degree burns, walang sakit ito. No? And you will not apply anything, just cover it with light uh, covering just to protect it from the elements and then call for help. So, what are the types of burns? No, obviously, uh, burns from flames. No, uh, thermal burns can be from flames, can be from hot objects. No, if you touch something hot, let, let's say uh, you want to have, uh, you want to clean the car in the hot sun. Uh, when you try to wipe the hood, it's very hot, and you scald your hand. No? Um, a, a flammable vapor ignites or steam. No, or hot liquid, no steam, or uh, the vapor from a hot liquid can cause thermal burns. No? So your uh, objective is to cool the patient, stop the burning, no? uh, remove the patient from the source of uh, the heat, the thermal heat, the th thermal stress. No? If there is open flame, smother the uh, with a blanket, cover it, uh, remove the oxygen from the uh, from the equation. Remember. Uh, uh, a flame has three components: uh, oxygen, oxygen, the uh, the, uh, the uh, combustible material, no? 
uh, and the uh, how it is ignited, no, the spark. No? So uh, the fire, the combustible material, and oxygen. Remove one of the three, just one of the three, and the, the flame is extinguished. So it is easier to remove oxygen by covering it with a wet blanket no? and ask the patient to roll. No? So uh, uh, all the uh, areas where there is a uh, flame will be extinguished. No? Then afterwards, determine the depth or degree of burn. Again, first, second, or third degree burn. For chemical burns, uh, uh, chemical burns are caused by acids. Uh, an example would be uh, car battery acid or alkalis. Uh, uh, the stuff you put in your toilet if it's clogged, yeah, it's alkali. They also cause alkaline burns. No? Some oil products do cause burns, especially when you have an allergic reaction. Uh, some people are very sensitive to oils, no? and when they come in contact with industrial oils, for example, uh, they, they contract the uh, first to second degree burns. What to do? Remove the chemical, of course. Uh, flush the area with water. Water dilutes the, the acids. No? So the strength of the acid is decreased when you dilute it with the universal solvent. No? So water is not only the universal coolant, it is the universal solvent. No? Um, if the chemical is uh, dry, dry powder, you know, brush it away. No, do not flush dry chemicals. No? When you flush it with water, it becomes liquid, it can become a, become a uh, concentrated acid. No? So if it is a powder, uh, brush it off. No? Uh, take precautions to protect yourself from the splash of the chemicals when you try to, uh, to uh, douse it with water or remove the, the chemical. No? Uh, remove the victim's contaminated clothing and jewelry while flushing water. Bucket jewelry, you know, if the patient has a ring and the, and the burn includes the hand, you no, know, the, the fingers will be swollen such that the ring will be a constrictive band which uh, will constrict the blood vessel from entering the finger. It might uh, uh, become gangrenous. Uh, the, finger will, the finger will have to be chopped off uh, if it's gangrenous already. Flush for, a, for a, quite a a lengthy amount of time, about 20 to 30 minutes you know, with running water if you have burns in your eyes you know, or skin or eyes. So this is an example of, uh, of a patient who has had a uh, uh, vapor which, enter, which has uh, come in contact with the eye and the eye gets very, very irritated, very, very red. Uh, consider that a chemical burn and flush it continuously. Turn on the faucet, uh, not full blast. No? Uh, 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 medium stream no? and uh, keep the eye under uh, the flowing water for about 20 minutes. No? Of course, the patient can blink, right? Uh, but uh, try to open the, the, the eye so that water can indeed go to uh, dilute the whatever acids there are in the eye. No? And then, of course, seek medical attention. Another type of burn is electrical burns. No? So um, mild electrical shock can cause ser uh, serious internal injuries. There are three types of electrical shock. No? Thermal uh, burn from a flame in a, uh, an electrical shock. No? Patients, uh, objects in direct contact with skin are ignited uh, by an electric current, uh, mostly caused by flames uh, produced by the electrical current, not by the passage of electricity. Another uh, type of electrical uh, burn is arc burn. No? Occurs when electricity jumps or arcs from one place to another. Every jump, it burns the skin. No? Every jump, it burns the skin. And then contact, uh, true electrical shock or contact electrical shock. Occurs with the electricity current, electrical current passes through the body. So you have uh, burns in your internal organs as well. So in this in this case here you have your uh, say uh, electrical injury the electricity will burn up through the skin you know, into the deeper layers and can even reach your internal organs. What to do if you have uh, electrical burn? Always think. Saan ang galing yung electrical burn ayan? There must be a short circuit somewhere, a live electrical wire, or a fallen uh, electrical uh, uh, post somewhere there. No shut off the electricity. No? Uh, unplug any appliance which the patient might be uh, uh, much have handled. No? Unplug it, disconnect it, or turn off the power uh, in your main electrical uh, circuit breaker. No? 
So uh, if that yeah, if that is impossible, let's say you don't know where the breaker is, you don't seem to see any source of uh, electricity, you know, call the power company or call the barangay uh, for help. So do not try to climb any high electrical wires to cut it. No, uh, consider all wires you see as live. No, uh, do not handle any down uh, electrical wires. Uh, do not come in contact with a person. Let's say you see a person with a, with a burn on uh, the skin and uh, he's laying over uh, an electrical wire. No, do not touch him because he might, be, uh, he might conduct electricity to you. If the victim has fallen, check for spinal injury. Treat him for shock. Elevate the legs as I've uh, mentioned a while ago. And of course, call for help and seek medical intention, uh, attention immediately. So we, we've tackled uh, what first aid is, uh, the links to survival. We've tackled uh, a very, very common occurrence in the household, which is burns. Now we come uh, in the, to another uh, very, very common occurrence also at home, open wounds. No? So what is the burst, basic first aid for open wounds or, or wounds? Here we have a, a, an open wound. This is a break in the skin surface. That results in uh, external bleeding. So, of course, when you have a break here, you, you see blood coming out. No? And it will allow bacteria to enter the body. The skin is uh, your first line of defense against bacteria. No? So, um, whenever you are in a uh, dirty area, your skin is the one that protects you. Bacteria can, can uh, come in contact with your skin, but your skin will not allow it to enter. If you have a wound, the, the bacteria can now enter the wound. No? Oh, what are the types of wounds? So you have an abrasion. Ito yung ano lang, gas, gas, no? scrapes. No? So that only the top layer of the skin is removed from epidermis to some part of the dermis. No? Laceration, when you have a jagged uh, cut in the, uh, the skin, it has irregular edges. It's caused by forceful tearing away of the tissue. Um, at home, uh, I've had uh, cases wherein... Uh, uh, sumasabit yung, yung skin sa pako at na, ano, na, nadaganan. So you have laceration here or tumama sa barbed wire. No? Um, so you have lacerations. No? Incisions naman, if laceration is jagged, incisions are smooth and uh, precisely cut. No? Uh, it resembles a surgical or a paper cut. Incisions, uh, you can have knife cuts, no? uh, accidental cuts from your scissors, except, for example. Punctures is when uh, a sharp object has gone through the skin, no? uh, it causing a deep, narrow uh, tunnel. No? Um, stab wounds, uh, punctures can be from a thumbtack to a nail. No? It can be as superficial as just your skin or, or to as deep as going inside your internal organs. Avulsion man, is a, a flap of skin which has uh, been removed or... Uh, uh, taken off, no? so you have a vulsed, uh, avulsion, uh, avulsed skin, a flap of skin torn loose. And of course, amputation, when some, something gets amputated, a toe, a finger. So what to do? You know, again, uh, because there is blood, you wear your protective equipment, no? gloves or uh, just something to cover your, your hands, like a uh, sandwich bag or a plastic bag. No? Uh, wear gloves, uh, look at the wound, uh, control bleeding through what? Again, uh, direct contact, no? direct pressure, no? uh, elevation. No? Clean the wound uh, to prevent infection. Uh, wash uh, shallow wound gently with soap and water. No? Uh, but in general, for first aider, uh, first aiders, I would prefer them to just use water just to clean away the, the grime and debris from the area. Let the, the EMTs, the nurses and the doctors take care of clean the wounds, the wound with the disinfectant. Um, wash and try to wipe from the center in a spiral up, palabas, no, out. So from a smaller circle to a bigger circle, so in a spiral motion, and irrigate with water no, to remove the the grime and debris. If it's a se severe wound, no, clean only when the bleeding has stopped. So if it's a wound that is, is uh, actively bleeding, profusely bleeding, your first, uh, your, first uh, pr your, your priority is to stop the bleeding. Just pad the wound with uh, cloth, clean cloth. You know, keep on padding it until the bleeding stops. 
remove small objects that do not flush out by irrigation, by uh, using tweezers or clean tweezers. If the bleeding restarts, apply pressure, as I mentioned a while ago. And uh, to, to control the bleeding, uh, use roller bandages to apply uh, uh, much firmer pressure no? when, you, when you roll bandages around the limb. Keep dressings uh, dry and clean. Uh, do not remove dressings uh, when the when if the dressing gets soaked with blood. Do not remove it. Just add another one. Uh, add another layer. Keep adding. Keep adding uh, gauze and uh, clean cloth until the bleeding is controlled. No? The dressing should be changed already in the hospital. So you do not change dressings. No? Uh, if it's if the if the wound is. Uh, uh, the bleeding is profuse. You know. Your job is only to stop the bleeding and pad more and more uh, gauze. So, um, you know, no matter how careful we are, sometimes uh, the wound really gets infected. No? So, what are the signs of wound infection? Number one, it's swollen. No? There's uh, redness. It's tender to touch. It's warm. No? And... Uh, it is very very painful no uh, it's swollen no it is uh, the pain is throbbing no uh, the patient might have chills because the bacteria might have gone into the bloodstream already and caused fever and chills no? uh, patients will have swollen lymph maculane no lymph nodes no? and uh, if there are certain uh, bacteria no um, for example tetanus which causes lock jaw no? and uh, you should receive uh, a tetanus shot within uh, 72 hours or 3 days no? So for dressings and bandages, the, pur the purpose of the dressing is to, one, of course, as we've mentioned a while ago, control the bleeding. Uh, second, protect the wound from getting infected, no? so prevent infection, contamination. It also absorbs blood and uh, drains away the fluid which comes out of the, of the wound. No? Uh, it also protects the, wounds from, the wound from further injury. So again, uh, always wear gloves when applying dressings and bandages. No? Uh, use a dressing large enough uh, to extend beyond the wound's edges. So you don't put a small dressing in a large wound that's useless. No? You, you have a big dressing no? which you put on top of the wound. The dressing should uh, extend to way beyond, about an inch beyond the, uh, the edges of the wound. If the, if the wound is uh, uh, two inches uh, long, this is it's a laceration, which is two inches long. You apply uh, gauze or a dressing, which is four inches uh, in diameter. You know? So it will, it goes well beyond the edge of uh, the wound. Cover the dressing with bandages, like the roller bandages that I've mentioned a while ago. So the roller bandage, which I talked about. So we have the gauze. You know? uh, the bandage is used to uh, firmly keep the dressing in place over the wound. It also creates pressure. So when you roll the gauze tightly enough, it causes uh, pressure, which uh, can control the bleeding. It also helps prevent uh, swelling or reduce swelling by limiting the, the amount of blood rushing into the wound. Uh, it provides some stability and support for, uh, for a joint or an extremity. The bandage should be kept clean but need not to be sterile it's only use is to hold the dressing remember this is just first aid no so uh, the primary concern for the first aider is to control the bleeding yeah prevent infection you know, stabilize the patient no? it is the job of the hospital or the medical uh, personnel to keep to keep the wound clean by dressing it with uh, disinfectants and giving the patient uh, some antibiotics yeah? so that ends our first module on first aid. Uh, we have actually uh, uh, discussed already a lot of items in this first module. No? So we have discussed the chain of survival, uh, how to control bleeding, uh, how to control shock or how to respond to shock, um, how to take care of burns, no? uh, especially the most common ones, no? the, uh, the superficial burns and electrical burns. Uh, and some of the uh, rarer ones, but still can occur in the community, such as uh, chemical burns or burns in the, in, in the eye. No? And uh, now you know some first aid on how to deal with them. Um, hopefully, you can apply these techniques uh, when it is necessary. Of course, we hope that uh, um, it might not, you may not uh, 
come in contact with these situations, but it would help for you to uh, know what to do when time when that time arrives. So thank you very much for your for listening, you know, and uh, I hope uh, you have some takeaway from uh, the first module on uh, basic per se. Bigyan ng boses ang sigaw ng 